Bojo. Uh, I am not very tech savvy, but so bear with me. And I'm glad Nisa's here. It's because it's you young youth that's been guiding me through all these new things, these new platforms. So, um, Bojo. Wabas Gisko Niken Kaya Tabit, Nishtakaz, Makododem, Dunjiba, the Nape Nation, Nani Lenape, Nishnabe Koyendel. And what I said is, my spirit name is uh, Polar Bear Woman Who's Looking Ahead. I'm Bear Clan. And the nation I come from is from the, the Lenape Nation, um, which is um, located along the Thames River, more further west in the Chatham Kent area. Um, that's where my community is, but also I'm part from my mom's side, the matriarchy side of that bear clan, Nidashingnaming near Georgian Bay, Bruce Peninsula. So I just, I'm excited about this evening um, to have this wonderful opportunity to, to introduce you to our guest speakers and the importance of the good work that they're doing, each and every one of them are our future. They are the future of um, helpers that are going to be working within, whether it's urban, on reserve or off reserve, and helping um, within the community and that gaining that understanding of indigenous ways of, of seeing, ways of, of feeling, ways of knowing and ways of doing. And each one of these individuals worked really hard, not only in the work that was given to them within their program, it, it's called Traditional Healing Methods Native Community Worker Program. It's a college degree program and they get to take away and, and they get to build their knowledge bundles and, and, and to take and carry them to where that needs. Some of them wanna work with youth, some of them want to make a child and family um, services, and some of them would like to work in going back home, back to their communities. So they are a, of each and every one of them, their authentic self that they're going to bring their gifts to, to, um, to tonight's speaker series. And so what we're going to do right now is first of all, um, and again, be patient with me because um, I'm co-host. And so I'm going to um, attempt to um, <laughs> bring up, first of all, we wanna open up with the Thanksgiving address. And so I wanna be able to make sure the screen is up so each and every one of you can see this. So I'm gonna bring it up right now and Okay, and here we go, and here we go. And please let me know, Nisa, that we can see it okay. I see the nod. Okay, so before in part of our Indigenous ways of knowing and who we are, we get an opportunity to, to share um, and part of that teaching. And so we, even though we're on a Zoom platform, inner body, mind, heart, and spirit, we're all sitting in that circle process, that circle of life. And, and within that circle of life is all part of, of land, fire, air, and water. And those are all part of the importance of who we are as spiritual beings as we walk through this human experience. So before anything even begins, we wanted to open up with the Thanksgiving address. This comes from our, our Hongwe Hongwe Haudenosaunee brothers and sisters. And we have always within our classroom setting, whether we were meetings, gatherings, this was something that always that we always implemented as the beginning before we start anything. So we thought this is the time to share with each and every one of you here. Okay, so this is the Haudenosaunee Thanksgiving address. Greetings to the natural world, words before all else. So each of us, um, between the six of us, we're all gonna take turns with this Thanksgiving address in this presentation. So I'm gonna start. The people, 
Today we have gathered and we see that the cycles of life continue. We have been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now we bring our minds together as one, as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Now our minds are one. The right. Earth Mother, we are all thankful to our mother, the Earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk about upon her. It gives us joy that she continues to care for us as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we, we send greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. The medicine herbs. Now we turn to all the medicine herbs of the world. From the beginning, they're instructed to take away sickness. They're always waiting and ready to heal us. We're happy they're still among us, uh, those special few who remember how to use these plants for healing. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the medicines and to the keepers of the medicines. Now our minds are one. Uh, the plants. Now we turn toward the vast fields of plant life as far as I can see. The plants grow, working many wonders. They sustain many life forms. With our minds gathered together, we give thanks and look forward to seeing plant life for many generations to come. Now our minds are one. Mm, miigwech. The food plants. With one mind, we turn to honor and thank all the food plants we harvest from the garden. Since the beginning of time, the grains, vegetables, beans, and berries have helped the people survive. Many other living things draw strength from them too. We gather all the food plants together as one and send them a greeting and thanks. Now our minds are one. The waters. We give thanks to all the waters of the world for quenching our thirst and providing us with strength. Water is life. We know its power in many forms. Waterfalls and rain, mist and streams, rivers and oceans. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the spirit of water. Now our minds are one. The animals. We gather our minds together to send greetings and thanks to all the animal life in the world. They have many things to teach us as people. We see them near our homes and in the deep forest. We're glad they are still here and they hope and we hope that they always be so. Now our minds are one. The trees. We now turn our thoughts to the trees. The earth has many families of trees who have their own instructions and uses. Some provide us with shelter and shade, others with fruit, beauty, and other useful things. Many peoples of the world use a tree as a symbol of peace and strength. With one mind, we greet and thank the tree life. Now our minds are one. Mm -hmm. The birds. We put our minds together as one and thank all the birds who move and fly about over our heads. Uh, the creator gave them beautiful songs. Each day they remind us to enjoy and appreciate life. The eagle is chosen to be their leader. To all the birds from the smallest to the largest, we send our joyful greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. Mm. <clears throat> the four winds. We are thankful to the powers we know as the four winds. We hear their voices in the moving air as they refresh us and purify the air we breathe. They help bring the change of seasons. From the four directions they come, bringing us messages of giving and giving us strength. With one mind, we send our greetings and thanks to the four winds. Now our minds are one. Oh, meet watch. All right. The thunders. Now we turn to the west where our grandfathers, the thunder beings, live with lightning and thundering voices. They bring with them the water that renews life. We bring our minds together as one to send greetings and thanks to our grandfathers, the thunderers. Now our minds are one. Mm. The sun. Now we send our greetings and thanks to our eldest brother, the sun. Each day without fail, he travels the sky from the east to the west, bringing the light of the new day, of a new day. He is a source of all the fires of life. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our brother, the sun. 
Now our minds are one. Mm -hmm. Grandmother Moon, we put our minds together and give thanks to our oldest grandmother, the moon, who lights the nighttime sky. She's the leader of the women all over the world, and she governs the movement of the ocean tides. By her changing face, we measure time. It is the moon who watches over the arrival of the children here on Earth. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our grandmother, the moon. Now our minds are one. The stars, we give thanks to the stars who are spread across the sky like jewelry. We see them in the night, helping the moon to light the darkness and bringing dew to the gardens and growing things. When we travel at night, they guide us home. With our minds gathered together as one, we send greetings and thanks to all the stars. Now our minds are one. The enlightened teachers. We gather our minds to greet and thank the enlightened teachers who have come to help throughout the ages. When we forget how to live in harmony, they remind us of the way we're instructed to live as people. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to these caring teachers. Now our minds are one. Mm. The creator. Now we turn our thoughts to the creator or the great spirit and send greetings and thanks to all the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here on this Mother Earth. Now for all, or for all of the love that is around us, we gather our minds together as one and send our cho choicest words of greeting and thanks to the creator. Now our minds are one. Mm -hmm. Michael Des. Closing words. We have now arrived at the place where we end our words of all the things we have named. It was not our intention to leave anything out. If something was forgotten, we leave it to each individual to send such greetings and thanks in their own way. Now our minds are one. Mm, Miigwech. So welcome everybody. Um, we, we started out with our Thanksgiving address as the opening prayer to remind us how we're all related. We're all interconnected and, and to acknowledge all of our relations. And as you see, each of us has lit up a smudge to cleanse, to do, to cleanse, and to 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 um, our eyes so we can see those good things, our ears to hear those good things, our mouth to speak those good words, you know, and our heart if it's heavy to brush that off so that we can come into this beautiful, beautiful talking sharing circle in a good way. So I thank each and every one of you. Now we're gonna go into sharing and again as i share the my your patience with me as i'm here we go we got it i'm going to get it started and i'm going to go back in now and i can share okay so this evening we're going to be talking about the well-being through the indigenous ways of knowing and so part of that indigenous ways of knowing is as we travel through the circle of life and the term indigenous ways of knowing is, is acknowledging the beauty and diversity of indigenous ways of learning and teaching. And so this evening we have five beautiful guest speakers that through their, through their ways of knowing as their sacred bundle unfolds, they get to share their gifts and purposes as each and every one of them locate themselves in this beautiful sharing teaching presentation this evening. Okay. And so I'm going to introduce our first guest speaker. Um, hello, my name's Stefan. Uh, I'm 34 and uh, I've got five daughters and two of them live with me today. And uh, I'm not married, but I've been with my uh, partner. She's uh, from Chippewa of the Thames. She's, uh, we've been together for, uh, I lost count, like 12, 13 years. So uh, we live in London and uh, we're moving to her reserve the end of the month and uh yeah i just finished uh first year at aei and i just want to help the community i want to serve the community and 
help you know young families uh who who seem to like who feel they don't have any support so yeah yeah so i met stefan a few years back um in the beginning of his uh healing journey on this red road and he has such an amazing story you know to share with others because through his trials and tribulations he's come to such a wonderful place where he's able to now share and in in that those experiences so that he can as broke breaking barriers and cycles he's at such a wonderful place as being part of um um as as Skalbelish, as part of our helper circle of life. Okay, our next uh, guest speaker is Oakland. Ani Bojo, my name's Oakland. Um, I'm from Saugeen First Nation, number 29, which is located along the Saugeen River and Bruce Peninsula. I'm 23 years old, and I currently live in London, Ontario with my awesome partner and our beautiful dog. Um, I just finished my first year at AEI um, in the Native Community Worker and Traditional Healing Methods Program. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to go back and bring what I learned back to my community when I'm done. Um, and I'm excited for my second year. I'm happy to be here today to tell you about spiritual well-being through Indigenous ways of knowing. Mm -hmm. Oh, me glitch. And our third guest speaker, Shoshana. Hey. Um, on you, my name is Shoshana Johnston. Uh, is my native given name. I'm 22 year old, half Ojibwe, half Potawatomi from Saugeen First Nation. Um, I reside in London, Ontario, and I'm currently studying the Native Community Worker Traditional Healing Methods Program. I just finished my first year. Um, it's been a great experience so far, and I look forward to a career in the field. And our next guest speaker, Destiny. Sagoli. My name is Agahage, which translates to summer in the Mohawk, Mohawk language. My English name is Destiny. I'm a Haudenosaunee woman and I come from Oneida Nation and um, Akwazasne Mohawk Territory. I'm Part of the wolf clan and i'm a loving mother of my two beautiful children my oldest mia she's two years old and my youngest dakota who is seven months about to be eight months and we follow the matriarchy system so therefore they are wolf clan as well um i just completed my first year of ncw uh course at aei and um I wanted to learn more about myself and my Indigenous roots. And, you know, I hope to become a traditional child and family worker. Hey, Gwetch. And our next guest speaker, Jessica. Um, hello, uh, my spirit name is Madewa Kagijigo Kwe which means um, kind sky woman. You know, I'm also known as Jessica Hannes. I'm from the Kejuan territory. And that means where the waters divide. It's also known as Wapu Island First Nation, reservation number 46. But I reside in Windsor, Ontario. Um, I'm also Ojibwe and I'm from the Turtle Clan. Um, I'm a mom of three beautiful children and I also have an amazing partner that's a great supporter. Um, our family enjoys going for nature walks and bike rides through the trails around our neighborhood. Um, you know, when I first got into this course, um, I didn't know what I was getting myself into at first. But, you know, since I started this course, you know, um, I've grown my bundle, you know, and I've, I feel like a changed woman almost. And yeah, that's me. and we did the thanksgiving address so we just wanted to share with you as part of as we are 
talking about um, well-being from the Indigenous ways of knowing, I wanted to talk with you and, and to tell you about the importance of um, Gujamina Do Creator has gave the seven grandmother and grandfather teachings as guiding as guided values and principles, you know, to encompass that kind of morals, our morals, it's that as spiritual beings living human experiences can aspire to live that when what we call that Minobawadzawin, that good life that creator intended us to, 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 to live in that good way. And so we thought that we'd share this with you and that understanding of what that means. And as you can see, each and every one of them are that are the outside of the circle. And these teaching us that for people to be happy and healthy and how we can on go develop oneself spiritually, emotionally, physically, and mentally. And as you see that one seven grandfather teachings of love, that love, unconditional love between one another, including all creation and humans and non-humans and unseen and scenes you know, of all of all of the universe. And so this is why when we opened up with that Thanksgiving address to acknowledge that wonderful piece of, of, of creation. And then we look at respect. And it's that respect is not only respect for self-respect of oneself, to go easy on one another in all of creation, you know, respecting oneself, respecting in who we are. And then there's that grandfather teachings of humility, you know, to always to humble oneself and, and to all that sustains us, that humility, that, that humbleness, that when one, we go through a life experience, a teaching its experience, we look at it as choice and what we can learn from that experience. Truth, to only experience. Uh, to speak only to the extent that we live or experienced. And this is why we're here to this evening in this talking series and these five guest speakers that they know and understand and speaking their truth, they can only speak and locate from where they are from their own experiences that they've learned in life. And bravery, each and every one of them and these guest speakers, they're, they're showing that bravery, that courage to, you know, and everything that do, they do in this walk of life to, to share with you, to teach with you, that understanding to live with a solid, strong heart. And honesty, honesty is to live correctly with virtue. And then that wisdom to live with vision, to live with all that there is. Okay. And so I'm going to move the screen down. So um, our first guest speaker, um, Stefan, the spiritual well-being through Indigenous ways of knowing. Okay, so I'm going to just talk to you, everyone, about spirituality and uh, the well-being of spirituality through Indigenous ways of knowing. Um, Tracy, if we go to the next slide. Um, so this is just the part of the circle that Tracy was speaking of. Um, the spiritual part is in the east and the eastern doorway. And so this, this picture is just showing just the certain things that are part of that eastern doorway, like prayers and sweats, smudging. I'm going to talk about that in a little more depth. So, um, Tracy, the next slide, please. Okay, so smudging, something we just did. Um, it's just, it's, it's how, how it affects us spiritually and, and the well-being. Spiritually well-being is like, it, first off, it acknowledges the, our ancestors and, and it shows our gratitude to the creator. So that's something uh, a grandmother told, told me this year, actually, it, it, at AEI and um because we were smudging every morning and it kind of everyone would be always tired and in, in the beginning of class so we'd smudge and it would really get the energy up it, you know everyone's spirit comes alive with that smudge also clears away negative energies um mm -hmm. I'm sure like people seen those um those uh the sage sticks and stuff like that so 
Also, another thing is uh, when we smudge, we smudge our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our head, and our heart for to, so that we could see good things, to hear good things, to speak good things, to think good thoughts, and have a good heart. So that that smudging really uh, it, it boosts our spirituality. I guess it it cleanses it. It cleanses the negativity around it. So. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Um, and also the sweat lodge, um, it represents the womb of Mother Earth and uh, symbolizes a rebirth, uh, a fresh start, so to speak. Uh, it can be a form of detoxing as well, anything negative. And um, there's four rounds in a sweat and there's prayers that are said and sacred songs and the drum is also involved in there. And it's just, uh, you feel your higher self when you're in there. You feel your, like, there's no, the reason it's so dark as well, like I was told, was so that you can't see anyone in, else in there. You can be, you don't have to put on a front or what, anything, right? You be yourself. You be your true. We're, we're spiritual beings in a hu human having a human experience. So when that spirituality comes out in the sweat lodge, it's like you feel that, and uh, it's really good, good spiritually. So also as a firekeeper, I fire kept uh, quite a bit of ceremonies um, from sweat lodges to like moon ceremonies and beasts and such, and um, it just it it gives you. Um, like gives you time like a reflection i guess you're you're um you're getting in touch like i said with your higher self there it's not it's just you and yourself when you're a firekeeper so i think that's it gives you uh it's um you're helping you're helping you're guarding that eastern doorway too so you're helping uh those in their heel and and helping them with the prayers and stuff. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, the sacred circle, singing and drumming. Uh, in a sacred sharing circle, nobody's above, below. Uh, it's We're all on the same level, like everyone's equal. So that's something that's like, you, again, you get you get to speak as your your true self. You don't have to, if your boss is in the circle, they're not your boss in that circle. They're, they're there just as, you know, just as you are there. So it's like very, there's no judgment or anything like that in that, in that space. So it's super sacred. It's super safe. There's no judgment. Like I said, there's, you know, there's no need to uphold any image of your, you you you're just yourself, you're, and that's that's like that spirituality, uh, your true self, right? And um, singing and drumming is also an incredible way to upkeep the well-being spiritually, because the drum symbolizes the heartbeat of Mother Earth, and the drum itself has a spirit. Um, I I learned that you shouldn't ever hang a drum because it's like a drum has this has a spirit we wouldn't you know hang ourselves on the wall or so things like that you treat it as if it's 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 very sacred right so they even feast for a drum and uh there's ceremonies to give life to a new drum and uh that shows its importance and uh the spirit becomes one with your spirit that drum spirit and your spirit becomes kind of like entangled and so when you sing, it, it's sacred. And then um, it's a huge part, that singing and, and the drumming part, because uh, those songs are sung with the beat of the drum. And there's special songs like for each specific like setting, I guess. So like for ceremonies, there's sacred songs. For ceremonies, there's social songs. There's songs made for women. There's songs for children. There's songs, you know, there's it's a... Um, that's what's so cool is for everybody. It's for, and that's how you raise your spirit. It's like, I remember at one time I, uh, at a healing lodge, we're, we're, they're singing. And then there was one, one of the guys there, he didn't know any songs. So 
he kind of start freestyling or whatever, just cut things, sing, singing with things off top of his head and everyone laughed. And you know what I mean? That just brings up that spirituality to like good energy. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and then the connection. I think this is where I could relate a lot more, to be honest. It's um, the issue nowadays is that disconnect especially with the pandemic um, where we've all been told to like stay indoors and stuff. So um, through this way, indigenous way of knowing, establishing a connection is extremely important to maintain that spiritual well-being. So what we have to understand first is that we're part of the, na we're part of nature. We're part of the universe. We're not separate from it. So a good example I like to use is like the a droplet of water in the ocean. It's still part of the ocean, you know, where the droplets. So that's how we have to think. That's how that's the mentality we should have because um, the colonizers, when they came, they they thought the land was they were separate of the land. So that's how they mistreated it and used it and abused it. So uh they're able to realize this having that connection with nature is with what you naturally are is normal and having lost that connection leads to depression anxiety and other human conditions so just going to even hug a tree or going down to the river going down to a body of water and just like listening to the water or you know th those things really can like heighten that spiritual spirituality in you and it's a weird feeling because you feel one with it you feel one with nature it's very it could be overwhelming too so um yeah connect and stay connected with nature and i i, I love that picture because it says because uh, how all the youths are like into the wi-fi that's the first thing they ask when they come come over to my house all my nephews and stuff their nieces what's the wi-fi password so there's no Wi-Fi, but in the forest, but there's, but you will find the connection. So I thought that was sick. Um, yeah, that's 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 my part. All right, All right. Much. So the southern doorway, and so I'd like to introduce Oakland. Hello, hello. So Jean the southern doorway, um, which is the, uh, deals with emotional and relationships. Um, next slide, please, Tracy. So a little bit about the south. Um, Zhanong encompasses the emotional and relational realms. It brings forward the teachings of life, relationships, people, and growth. And uh, we'll cover literature relating to the principles of reciprocity and relationships. Zhanong brings the summer and renewal. Uh, this doorway addresses the issues of relationships, protocols, accountability, reciprocity, and community um, in Indigenous context. Building and nurturing quality relations is integral in a, to living a, in a good way. Uh, kinship systems serve to connect uh, threads between individuals, families, and communities and extend beyond biology. Uh, for example, kinship systems can be based on the clan system where relationships and roles are determined by clan identity and function. Uh, next slide, Tracy. Stuff in the way. Um, here uh, in the southern direction of the medicine wheel, everything is thriving. The trees have come awake, uh, producing their leaves. Life itself is awake and dancing uh, because the summer stage is here, a time of continued nurturance for all of creation when everything is new and growing fast. Um, in the south, the color is red. The Red Nation is in the south. Uh, it's the middle part of the day. It's the season of summer. The time of life is here is youth or adolescence. The animal of the south uh, is the deer for the Anishinaabe people. Uh, for our Aboriginal further south, uh, the, anim is, uh, the animal is uh, a mouse or a coyote. The deer teaches us about being generous because the deer gives us meat to eat and skins for our clothing and drums and shoes. And the deer also teaches us to be loyal, honest, and respectful to others. And like a little bit more about just the summer and like coming awake, like everyone kind of wakes up in the summer because uh, 
we're getting over that darkness of the winter. So in that summer kind of brings everyone's happiness out, you know. Um, next slide, please, Tracy. So associations and representations. Uh, the plant associated, associated with the Southern Doorway uh, is cedar. It was given uh, to help us in this direction. Uh, the summer and youth are often represented in the Southern direction. Uh, the youth are at a stage where they're looking for themselves and then they're, they're, they're in their wandering stage of life. Um, in the direction, uh, we're reminded to look after our spirits by finding the balance within ourselves and to pay attention to what our spirit is telling us. If we listen to our intuition, we'll be safe. Uh, next slide, Tracy. So this doorway specifically uh, calls for renewal at relational levels um, and it tends to relationships. Um, it integrates understandings of diverse, diverse relationships. Uh, it understands kinship systems and identifies community strengths and resources and collaborates with the community to foster healing relationships. Um, it utilizes methods that support healthy relationship building and acknowledges the contributions and roles of elders and contextualizes issues within a socio-political analysis of social problems facing Indigenous people today. Mm. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you all so much for listening to my part of the pre presentation. Hope you enjoyed. Miigwech. Miigwech. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So our next speaker in the... The Western Doorway is Shoshana. Hello, everybody. So the Western Doorway is the mental respect aspect of the, the wheel. So the West mental brings forth teachings of the ancestors, the mind, and respect. It relates to respect of knowledge and knowledge of creation. So sage, the medicine of this doorway, is used for releasing what is troubling the mind and for removing negative energy. <clears throat> so... The Western doorway brings autumn cleansing as well as mental strength and reason. In this doorway, Indigenous knowledge is acknowledged as a tool for healing and overcoming from colonial trauma. Uh, so the core principle of the doorway is respect. And a good way to oper operationalize respect in practice is to, stink, uh, is to step back and think holistically as all the doors are distinct and speak of the value of respect. So uh, respect can be applied and operationalized across all levels of social work practice to acknowledge and validate Indigenous views and philosophies is to practice respect. Next slide, please. So here's kind of just my idea of like what I think the holistic view is. So the idea of holistic living is to live a life of balance, harmony, and respect of all living things. It also applies to an indig individual's health and well-being. All things are interconnected and every individual is a sacred spirit. Uh, there is a belief that every individual lives in a sacred circle of life, which includes the mind, body, spirit, and emotions. All of these elements must be taken into consideration when one element is damaged or at a deficit that will impact the other elements also. So it's important to maintain balance and harmony in the four elements of the medicine wheel. So we come together to care for the spirit within ourselves and each other. The medicine wheel outlined in the slide that we're talking about is uh, only possible if every individual recognizes the importance of the spirit and welcomes support. So it's important for everyone to take responsibility and pay attention and to care for themselves. And um, so just a little quote here. The way of healing is holistic based on the understanding of the interconnectedness of all life and the importance of balance and harmony in creation. Next slide, please. So my doorway, or the doorway I'm talking about, um, it recognizes ancestors, ancestral knowledge and power. Um, it acknowledges the mental aspects and power of knowledge. Uh, it asserts and respects indigenous knowledge and ways of knowing. Um, it applies critical al analysis and knowledge of the political context of practice, develops critiqueness and mechanisms of colonialism, and engages in critical literacy and a critical education within indigenous communities um, and is an anti-colonial in practice and works to counter colonial ideologies, uh, acknowledges the ancestors and cycles of life and death. Miigwech. So I want to introduce to our next special speaker is Destiny. Hi. 
So this is the physical being or the northern doorway. So the physical, as in your body, the bones and muscles that make up the form are the things that physically carry you through the life and are an important part of your life. So exercising, a lot of people think exercising, eating healthy are the basic things for the physical being, but it's not only that, um, it's the physical health and the balance between um, the four aspects. Just go to the next slide, please. So the interconnectedness and balance in order to maintain a holistic approach to health and wellness, balance between the four aspects is essential. And based on the indigenous philosophy of life, the wellness wheel promotes health and wellness in a holistic manner. Or um, when I say wellness wheel, I mean the medicine wheel. So one area of the aspect can affect all the other areas of the well being, therefore, it would leave it unbalanced. So, for example, if your emotional um, aspect is unstable, then the rest of them will. Um, come crashing down. So they all kind of connect into one. That's why it's important to have balance between them all. You could just go to the next slide, please. So um, for my aspect, the physical things that you can do to um, keep your physical being strong and healthy. Um, in the indigenous approach, smudging with sage to cleanse the air that surrounds you. Um, again, um, going back into um, my fellow classmates' um, doorways, they say that it cleanses you, cleanses the air of all the negative things. And, um, you know, so you're thinking clear and um, saying positive things, you know, um, stuff like that. So that kind of affects the physical too. Um, spending time connecting to nature, you know, um, getting in touch with, with nature, going back to uh, the old ways of how we were before um, colonization. Um, getting plenty of sleep, you know, you have to have your rest or else you're going to come crashing again. Daily stretching, gentle movement, massages, stuff like that, that helps your body keep going. Um, eating good foods, you know, um, if you treat your body and eat terrible foods, fast foods all the time, your body's not going to run very well. It's going to run on the little bit of energy that that food gives you, whereas eating greens and your fruits, vegetables, um, the, prop, the proper healthy foods that come from the ground, you know, those are going to give you life. They're going to nurture your body the way that you, you want it to and you need it to. And, you know, going into ceremonies such as sweats, again, you know, going into a sweat, you're detoxing, you're cleansing yourself, letting go of all the stuff that you carry, all the negative stuff that you're carrying, you know, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. So that's uh, what I have to say about the physical aspect. And that's how things that you can take care of the physical aspect, along with all the stuff that interconnects with it. Mm, miigwech. And so our next, next guest speaker is Jessica. And she's going to share about how it all comes together, the center. Um, Alrighty, Hi, I'm Jessica. The center, you know, it's your fire within us. It's uh, code. Uh, the center represents a coming together of all four directions. Uh, the center represents the fire of life, where all directions meet in the center. And the teachings of integration, balance, interconnections, self-awareness, and holism are found. You know, for example, an indigenous worldview affects how people see themselves in their community. Um, an indigenous holistic theory of practice considers all four doorways and their elements. The center also represents the self, the spirit, the heart, mind, and the and body. Uh, respecting all res mm, yep, yeah, respecting all um, directions in policy, programming, and practice make holistic practice possible. 
The center fire could also represent all of existence. Um, it's, it is both the essence of self and the manifestation of all. It respects its respect for the land, the water, and the animals, and the elders, and the ancestors. Next slide, please. Um, oh, we ask oh, you have to unmute yourself. There you go. Okay, can there you hear me? Yeah. Okay. We Aboriginal people in Canada have an ancient culture with specific practices that provide us with guidance in our everyday life. Next slide, please. Um, the Indigenous knowledge is a way of life, you know. Um, some of those creation stories that we talked about, how we came from the stars and how the universe was created, you know, when the universe was created, it flowed through us, then we were part of the universe. Um, in Indigenous culture, it's customary to actually think about seven generations ahead and do things with that in mind. What that means is when you think about seven generations is that you want to leave something that's better for our children's children's children and so on. Practices and programming based on Indigenous theory will support one to be as strong and healthy as possible. In terms of clear minds, strong spirits, healthy bodies, and healthy hearts. It starts with the landscape and understanding the history and the foundational, that is foundational. Understanding the balance and interconnectedness be what you do. Having a relationship with the creator as well as a, re a relationship with the land that we live on and understanding that a lot of our subsistence comes from the land that we that was given to us by the creator. Traditional knowledge is transmitted and passed on at ceremonies through storytelling is where we learn the teachings and protocols. Next slide, please. Whoops, sorry about that. Ooh. My bad. No big deal, it's okay. Um, this is our four direction circle here. You know, it moves for, it moves around each direction from the east, the Wabinog, the south, the Zawawing Og, the west, Big Ishmog, and the north, Giwidin. I'm not sure if I said all those right, but you know. In the east um, is where a discussion of the spirit in the vision occurs. It moves to the south where the panel of relationships, community and heart. And then it moves to the west, the indigenous knowledge and production are entwined with the spirit of the ancestors. Throughout the northern, and then it goes to the northern exposure, we find ideas surrounding healing and actions and movements that guide practice. Uh, finally, all four directions and a final examination of the center, the fire, the shkod, where all elements interconnect and intersect. Next slide, please. You know, the, um, the indigenous holistic view is about balance, harmony, and bama diswin is the good life that we strive for. Indigenous ways of knowing, being, and doing, we have worked have worked for our ancestors and can be applied today. We can heal ourselves, our families, our communities, our nations, and the earth with the spirit and strength of our ancestors. Just want to say miigwech to all of my relations. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. And so, in conclusion to all that they've talked about and shared in this talking series, you know, each and every one of them about that indigenous culture, but culture within all of the four directions, red, yellow, black, and white, and the nations coming together in the identity of each of our belief systems, values, and principles. 
that cultural awareness, cultural struggles, cultural building and rebuilding and cultural um, preservation and maintenance. Cultural pre preservations, as each and every one of them shared in this talking series, talks about identity, name, clan, nation, and language. And so I want to acknowledge each of these students in this talking series, because the first day I met them, it was, they were quiet. They were, you know, they, we're still understanding what culture preservation was. What is that identity? And today they come before themselves and they locate themselves, not only in their presentations, they locate themselves in their essay writings, they locate themselves in the classrooms. And here they are this evening, locating themselves in who they are. So I honor and acknowledge each and every one of these speakers here today. And because this is our future, they talk about the seven generations. And we talk about and why we're here in the light as we continue to rekindle that fire, that center, that heart. And each of them represent that part of that center as that, that symbolizing that tree, that wood. And so each time we rekindle that fire, it helps those home fires burn within individual, family, community, and nation. And so miigwech, and, and, and I say, and I kind of now in all my relations to each and every one of these amazing future, because this is, we see before us, our future generation, our future helpers for the next generations to come. So with that, I, um, I don't know what to say after this. <laughs> we can open it up. Um, Amanda, any comments, any questions that maybe each and any, any of you, you that participants would like to ask or any comments to, to share? Because of, to remember, each of us are in a sharing circle. We have that equality and that we're sharing that diverse of that cultural identity because each and every one of us carry that cultural identity of where we come from of who you are. And so um, is there any questions or any comments? So I, I pass that to the circle to each and every one of you here. I know there's 27 of you. So I was going to ask our president to, to, to um, share. Tracy, I just want to say uh, thank you, first of all, uh, to, to for bringing this um, talk tonight to us. I think it's wonderful. I have been thrilled to listen to all of these perspectives and viewpoints. So thank you so much for doing the organizing and arranging it. And thank you to all of the um, uh, your students, the, the Indigenous youth here tonight for sharing your perspectives and your unique ideas.